Hey everybody, how you doing? Shane Presley here with Rock Paper Podcast. Let me tell you about my friends at Naked Vine, located at 1624 Clarkson Road in Chesterfield, Missouri, serving up all your finest wine, whiskey, and local craft beers. Stop by and visit them for some live local music. Wednesday, December 26th, Jimmy Tebow of the Schwag. And Thursday, December 27th, Graham Curry and John Brighton of Old Salt Union. Friday, December 28th, Diesel Island. And Saturday, December 29th, with Find a Drive. Uh, All this information and more can be found at nakedvine.net. Be sure to follow them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you, everybody, for uh, an amazing year. 2018 has been a whole lot of fun. I hope you've been enjoying the show and uh, learned a bunch of new local music with me. Continue to share and spread the good word. But uh, I wish you all happy holidays, and uh, thanks again for all the support. Enjoy the show. Um, the podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. Hey, this is Irene Allen, and you are listening to Rock Paper Podcast. You're welcome. <laughs> hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Naked Vine. <laughs> My name is Shane Presley. I host this show, Rock Paper Podcast, trying to help out a bunch of my friends in St. Louis Music and Comedy, and I uh, started putting together this showcase a while back, trying to uh, let everybody know about some great St. Louis singer-songwriters, and uh, I decided to invite uh, four members of the Defeated County out for this one, so uh, it's a rare treat to get them all sitting in a, on stools telling stories behind these songs, and uh, some of their band songs and some of their individual solo music, so... Uh, please help me welcome to the stage Irene Allen, Devin Cahill, Langan Neubacher, and Jeremy Essig. Thank you. Before anybody starts anything, I have to get out of the way that it's Jeremy's birthday. Yeah. And we, uh, we have to sing him happy birthday now. So, all right. Everybody ready? Oh, God. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Jeremy, happy birthday to you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Room of Strangers. (laughs) I got a, uh, I would just like to say for my birthday, my girlfriend got me a Smash Mouth ice cream cake. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty great. All right. Oh, shit, cupcakes! (laughs) Now it works. I think you should start. You then start I, birthday. Then I need to borrow your cape. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, so first of all, seriously, thank you all for singing a, me a happy birthday. Um, wh- how does this work, Shane? Do we tell the story and then play the song, or do we play the song and then tell the story? Uh, I'm feeling uncomfortable, <laughs> uh, is how I'm feeling. Uh, this Lean is, into that. This is, uh, this is a song that's, uh, this is the new EP my band put out uh, three weeks ago, and uh, it's called Side Whip, and that word means nothing, it's just a word I came up with. Uh, it's about, the song is about basically a friend of mine who 
I was visiting her and we were in a hotel room together and I didn't know what was going on. And I was like, is this like, a, like, are we going to start dating? Like, I didn't know. And then, so we didn't do anything. And then the next day I was like, was that weird? And then she went on Twitter and was like, oh, I just hung out with this guy. And I guess nothing was happening. I thought something was. And I was like, oh, it's fucking weird. She put that out to everybody. <laughs> uh, so it's just about that moment with a friend or whatever where you're like, is this a relationship? Or am I going to queer that by uh, trying to take it further? So... That's the story behind the song. I don't know why I had to go first. That was really uncomfortable. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Is that coming out? Is that not? No, yeah. I don't monitor. There we go.
Thank you. Now I feel like, like if anybody's ever played fantasy football, now I feel like I just did the first pick and I could just hang out until the third round. I made Jeremy go first because his songs are like a little more uplifting than mine. I mean... Well, I scream more. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they at least sound a little more uplifting. Um, I wrote this song uh, when I was stuck in a really, really bad relationship. And uh, I also had a, a good friend who was stuck in a bad marriage um, who was quite... Uh, religious, which sort of inspired the religious kind of uh, element to the song. Uh, that and just I always think that, you know, there's really beautiful metaphors to draw in there. Um, but this song, I guess, is about, uh, ultimately about, I think, what a lot of us feel, which is we are raised to believe that if you're just a good person and you work and you live a good life and you try to treat people right and whatever, that like, you know, life will be okay. Like as long as you're just like working and doing your thing and like being a good person, life will work out okay. And how that that's like not actually really the case. And that's sort of a bummer. Here's my rock, you're my hard place. Don't know why I keep stick on to you Like like on like more to my favorite dish in the kitchen buried under piles of shit I can't clean I can't leave From my rock There's a lot That God Doesn't say How your good deeds Won't feed the preacher For a day Between the cradle and the grave I'm your trash, she's your treasure I am gone, I am stuck on your shoe Like mortal, your favorite dish in the kitchen Buried under piles of shit I can clean And I can't leave From my rock There's a lot that God doesn't say How your good days won't feed the preacher for a day Doesn't say about the space between the cradle 
Funny, funny story on that song. The ex that that song was kind of about was in the band when I wrote that song. And I asked him about, like, you know, how he felt about me playing that song. And his response was just like, well, I don't like people to know our kitchen's that dirty. I was like, what? Did you even get that to me? I just went with it. It's fine. If there's anything worse than being in a band with your ex-boyfriend, it's being in a band with your boyfriend. I can definitely attest to that. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was also in a band with, uh, with my boyfriend. We were together for eight years and in a band together for six years. And, uh, and when we split up, I wrote, uh, I, wrote a lot of, I wrote a lot of songs, which was good. It kind of unlocked some stuff in my, in my brain. Um, and I think that when you go through bad stuff and hard times, you know, it's a good time to let it out through your outlet, and mine is music. So, um, so I wrote a lot of songs that were pretty sad. Um, and, uh, and I think that that just gets kind of uh, monotonous after a certain point and, uh, and depressing. So I tried, uh, I tried my hand at uh, what I thought was perhaps going to be a funny song. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so, you know, after ending this eight-year relationship, um, I sort of re-adventured into the world of dating. It's a strange and interesting world. Uh, I had, you know, this is, it had been my, it was my first time, you know, getting on Tinder and things of that nature. And... Uh, Super awkward and uh, somewhat horrifying. So, uh, so I wrote a song about it. Uh, you know, basically, it just it tells a story. Here we go. It's called Oh.
his kiss knows how to turn you to goo. Back at my place, we watch some Netflix. Then the time is due. We say, oh, 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 oh. This time it must be right, I know. Because he said I had a goal. It felt real good, but after I'm left wondering. The loneliness wash of you They only wanted to be friends with benefits But even that's askew They don't call right or send a carrier But it's like they don't want to talk about it But they still want to be heard it's not nice to ghost people. No. So after a while, I say no. I fall the time to take it slow. I'm getting to know me, you know. But first I had to adventure out had it years of seeds to sow. So I'll take it slow. Yes, I'm not Looking for your average Joe. Everyone. Thank you. Okay, well, in the tradition of this set, um, I think it is okay to ask your ex husband to come and play on a song that you wrote about him. Oh, it is. It is. It two is. of the songs in that set were about the sound guy. That we're about him, so. I collect exes, apparently. So uh, this is why my second marriage fell apart. Wow, that is awfully loud. All right. Taking sweet drags off of me You'd kiss me when you play guitar When you drove your car No, I wouldn't get far There you are Sticking to my top Well, I want to get hung up Dragged down a red part every night If you don't know how to do it Keep on trying till you get it right If I had what I would rather I would gather all the love I see I'm addicted to it, baby Maybe you could get addicted to me If I Shit, that sounds terrific. My eye looks pretty bleak. You'd share me with your family. I'd be your coolest friend. Put me down wherever, but the urge never ends. Well, honey, you know, because I told you there's a lot of ways to be untrue. It takes two to tango and perhaps two to relapse, too. If nobody is crediting me, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Get addicted to me, baby, because I'm gonna be addicted to you. Nobody is craving me, I don't know what I'm gonna do Get addicted to me, baby, cause I wanna be addicted to something, somewhere But I wanna stay addicted to you Birthday oh, boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies. Oh, I'm awake, ma'am. I uh, was just trying to act like I didn't have to do this again. Uh, out of just what Good try. Uh, so this is not a song about this song because I don't know what this song's about. Basically, I um, I read this uh, I read this article. I didn't even hear the original thing, but uh, where it was Stephen Merritt from the Magnetic Fields, and he like he did an NPR thing where they would bring people in and they would sh have you show your songwriting process, 
And so he made NPR build him a bar. And he's like, yeah, I just sit at a bar and I write songs. And I'm not very um, <laughs> prolific when I'm drunk. But, I, well, no, but so I was, in, um, I was in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and I had part of this riff, and I was like, I'm just going to sit at the bar until I write a song. Like, that was my whole plan. I'm just going to sit at a bar until I write a song. And I got super drunk, and then I woke up, and I just had these notes everywhere in my hotel room. And uh, also uh, these like bad chord charts I had written, which is why this song has a chord I can't really play. <laughs> but when I was drunk, apparently I thought I could. <laughs> so I don't 100% know what this song's about because it's like when you listen to someone else's song and you're like, I can interpret, I think, what they... I have no idea. I got blackout drunk. But uh, anyways, this is what came out of that. So whatever that means. <laughs> You guys ready to be sad again? <laughs> yes. Good, because it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, this song is from my, I recorded it on my solo EP, and uh, it's about, it's actually a song, sort of a love song, sort of, about the, um, 
the last nice boyfriend I had, when I guess I was like 23, I'm 31 now, I make great life choices. <laughs> um, uh, but he and I, he was a big sweetheart, but he just had like major Peter Pan syndrome. And I was like trying to adult for both of us and it just wasn't working. And uh, we ended up being super on again, off again. Uh, but he was really in love with my music uh, and that kind of inspired this song. Please bring home the children, I'm tired of crying at commercials about little babies away from mom and their paws and their paws and their paws are gone. Please bring home the bacon, I'll cook it, I'll play it for you. We can laugh, we can eat, we can drink till it's gone, it's gone and it's gone and it's gone for good. Take me or leave me, take me or leave me But stop taking me and leaving me alone Stop taking me and leaving me alone You can take me or leave me, take me or leave me But stop taking me and leaving me alone Stop taking me and leaving me alone Let's take all the babies and hide them away from the graves of their brothers and sisters and fathers that died before they were born. Let's take them and keep them and teach them and hide them away in the orchards where we used to play before, before our war. Take me or leave me, take me or leave me But stop, take on me and leaving me alone Stop, take on me and leaving me alone You can take me or leave me, take me or leave me But stop, take on me and leaving me alone Stop, take on me and leaving me alone You're sick of my music, I know, you know that I know But also you know that it's all you can hear when you're alone You're sick of my music, I know, you know that I know But also I know that it's all you can hear when you're alone Take me or leave me, take me or leave me But stop, take on me and leaving me alone Stop, take on me and leaving me alone You can take me or leave me, take me or leave me But stop, take on me and leaving me alone Stop Take on me and leaving me alone. I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm alone. I just want to say that Langan Neubacher is my favorite songwriter in St. Louis. She's also my best friend. I feel like very fortunate. To get to collaborate with her and hear her songwriting process, like I've heard her writing a lot of her songs because we were roommates for a while after my breakup. So we've all gone through lots of breakups. Yeah, and, it's uh, it's actually well. Sorry, no, I don't want to. Go ahead. I just was gonna say it's funny because I went through my major breakup and moved in with Irene and got back on my feet. <laughs> And then got my own place. And then Devin went through her major breakup and moved in with me. <laughs> this is why we are soul sisters. And uh, Whenever I went through a breakup, I moved in with a dude named Sean. He's not here. 
We don't thank know you, where, Sean. We don't know where Sean is right now, but all the best to him. Um, so yeah, this next song, uh, this is just a, this is just a plain and simple breakup song. Um, yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty devastated uh, after ending that eight-year relationship, and this song sort of just uh, wrote itself, like almost a year after that breakup. It takes a while sometimes to get over something big. Anyway, this is called uh, Another Stupid Song. Play me for a fool String me right along No I'll just write another stupid song. You were my weak spot, and I So, um, 
Like the tumbleweeds of the legendary American West, sometimes part of a girl's hair will get detached from, like just part of her weave will get detached from her head and roll around in the street with leaves stuck in it. And we call those tumbleweaves in the city, and they're everywhere. And um, I used to walk everywhere, and I wrote this song while I was doing that. Plastic tumbleweeds blowing. Wink, wink. Gas fumes filling the air. Beautiful concrete landscape. As far as the eye can see. country ain't country at all raised on the edge of the city
everybody, that voice, right? <laughs> oh, here's a good story before we go on break. Uh, one year, uh, the Riverfront Times called Irene and I <laughs> drunk, starving, caterwauling, caterwauling cats. cats. Uh, and then the next After day named her the best singer in St. Louis. <laughs> Which is an RFT. I think it's the second one. Yeah, thank you, Blair Styles of the RFT. Blair Styles, y'all. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think we're taking a break. Is that correct? We're taking Thank a break. Thank you so much. Um, am I going? Do you want to go? Let or do we want to start it differently this time? Do you want Irene to start this time? That's up to you. Yeah, excited. reverse order. Reverse order. Irene's going to start this time. Okay. I got a request for um, a song that I play in a band called The Barn Mice. Yeah. With the Manus Brothers and Drew Schaefer. So I'm going to play that. What's it about? Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, that it's so beautiful. Was, I just want to know. That was the only legit love song I've ever seen. That's sort of a hybrid of a quieter, prettier lullaby um, that I wrote about my ex-husband, Danny Sullivan, uh, for the wedding of my good friends, Matt and Jenna, who used to be in a band called The Monads. <laughs> that is, yeah, that's the only straight love song I've ever, ever written. That's not like a warning or <laughs> like something about a heartbreak. All right. So I'm going to play a, a new song. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to play a new song of mine. Um, I feel like um, people expect me to be this kind of positive person, and it's sort of like humor is my mechanism, and uh, I'm really honestly really far up in my head a lot of the time. And... Uh, I'm just trying to be what you want me to be, but really it's what I ultimately hope to be, uh, is a picture of positivity. So I'll just keep trying.
here amongst all the leaves and go free. That's good songs, ladies. I'm gonna try to play another good songs. Um, so this song, it's really personal. Um, I haven't even talked to like probably, I don't even know if all of my bandmates or family know this story or anything. So it's kind of funny to be telling it to a podcast and a room of some friends and some strangers. <laughs> but uh, I actually started to write this song as a, um, well, just so you guys don't get like excited and clap at the wrong place. I had a miscarriage and I actually wrote this song when I first found out I was pregnant and it was supposed to be like a really like happy song for my future child. And uh, then that happened and uh, my life kind of fell apart. And eventually it turned into this song instead. There must be more Than chemicals and science And balancing our diets Counting our cups, our lines Hoping not to die Crossing our fingers, our hearts Hoping not to die Tell me there's more Than the guessing and the trying And praying into silence Counting our sins, our lies Hoping not to die Sing our fingers, our hearts, hoping not to die.
than chemicals and science. Um, yeah, so uh, this is the song I get asked about the most. I learned a very important lesson, and the lesson is don't name a song after a woman, because that's the song people ask you about. Uh, this song is called Liz, and uh, the, the riff is based around a riff I wrote in Virginia Beach when I met someone named Liz, and our relationship did not go very far, and the lyrics are not about her at all, but um, they're not, no, they super are not. But, because uh, that relationship basically ended, like, we hung out for, like, four days, and then um, I was supposed to fly out to see her, and uh, the flight got bumped, and then the next flight they could get me on, I had paid for business class, and they could only get me an economy class, and so I said, <laughs> fuck it, and I didn't go. Exactly. So, uh that's the last time we talked, and so I thought lyrically it would be a really bad song if it was like, you seem really cool, but I'm not fucking flying economy to see you. So, uh, <laughs> it's about someone different, but the riff was named after her, and this is that.
Thank you. And I will still not fly economy for anyone. <laughs> Okay, I just thought of something to play and then I forgot what it was. Okay, yes, I remember. Uh, we're supposed to do a cover? No, not at the, that's at the, we're playing in, that's our Saturday. next show is in Saturday in Naperville, Illinois. Okay. If anyone feels like road tripping, uh, but you don't have to do a cover at this show. Nice. Okay. You can if you want, if it's, yeah, give us a story on All it, All right, though. well, you'll ask for it. Uh, so I lost 15 people in two and a half years, including my parents, and when my cousin Jimmy, who I grew up with and loved, died, <clears throat> like, a few months after our dad died, um, I completely unraveled and wrote this song. It's called The Suicide Gospel. Oh, sweet death. Take me home to my mama Wherever you stashed her away You took all the best ones and kept them And left us here 
I don't know how to follow that because I'm like ha- having a, a mo- an emotional moment. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. This has been such a fun night um, and such an emotional night. Yeah, this is way, while Devin recovers himself, I want to thank Shane and Dan. I want to thank this wonderful bar. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I want to thank my bandmates who are not only wonderful musicians and lovely professional people, but they're just wonderful, wonderful, lovely people. I keep saying wonderful too much. Thank you. Y'all have been an amazing audience. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) All right. So, uh, so I, uh, so after that horrible breakup that I keep talking about, uh, I, I wrote all those songs and I did, um, you know, after my band broke up, it was kind of hard for me to keep going with music, but I, I wrote all those songs, and I wound up in a situation where I was able to record those songs, and I made my first solo EP, so I do have those for sale um, for five bucks, and, uh, and this song is on there, and this is Langan's favorite, and it's my boyfriend Eric's favorite, and uh, it's called My Grace, and uh, it's kind of, it's not, it's not really a sad song. It's, it's very uplifting, I think. And it stemmed from a dream that I had um, that I actually have sort of a recurring dream that this is happening. And that I get this apartment or house and it's like, it's okay and I'm living there and it's all right. But I know that within that that house that there's like another house that you just have to like find this special door to get there and it's like then you get in there and it's like a mansion it's this beautiful house and I guess I sort of related what that dream was telling me to sort of going at battery saver mode and being sort of half myself and then realizing that everything that I need to be whole again is right there inside me. Um, So here's my grace.
my second favorite song of yours. But it's okay that you forgot. Sorry. It's okay. Forgive you. Can you tell how much we all love each other? <laughs> we like being in a band together. Gross. <laughs> it's gross in a good way, though. Right. We like the grossness. So, um... This is a, 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 new, a new song um, for me, and uh, it's kind of about n not being able to be in love with somebody until they're perfect, and seeing how you could love them if they are perfect, but of course they can't be, because nobody's perfect. Um, but it tries to be tricky and play itself off like a love song. So, um, yeah. I guess this song was about me writing about my breakup before I knew it was going to happen. I want you with your layers off I want you after all your false starts stop I want you when you're feeling When you feel Wanna lift in I want you when you're done 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 I want you with your layers on I want you when we're both on the right I want you when you're finished When you're finished playing princess I want you when you're done 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 I want you with your layers on I want you when you're through with all the fun I want you when you're finished Only want you when you're finished I want you when you're done 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 Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess since everyone's doing housekeeping, since this is the last song everyone's doing before we do two together, um, again, thank you to Shane and to Dan. One more time for Shane and Dan, ladies and gentlemen. That there are, there are, there's, I wouldn't say there's very few people, there's no one, I think, in St. Louis who cares more about, uh, comedy and music than, uh, Mr. Shane Presley, yes. so yes. he's a good, good dude. We musicians appreciate you. Yes. We appreciate you. Any performer in this town appreciates you, Shane. Uh, is right, what's that? From me? Yeah, do a little mini statement. No, back. we're 100% not going to do that. That's not going to be your last song. Your last song isn't going to be a comedy act. Yeah, I don't mean to be rude. My comedy sets actually do cost a lot of money. So, like, we're super not doing that. But, um, and yeah, and for anyone else, I know the crowd has dissipated significantly, but if you're like, hey, why do all these women have beautiful voices and then this dude's just here? Uh, I play guitar. He's our in their dude, yeah, is why, dude. and he's got a great voice, and it's his birthday, and we love it him. It is my birthday, and that once again makes me feel like the Special Olympics kid that everybody's just friends with. Um, no, we're like, you're like the popular guy in high school that we all want to be friends with. I was never that guy, nor will I be. But now you are. Um, anyways, this. Uh, I scream a lot, and this is not the appropriate venue for that, so I'm not going to do that. But. Uh, 
Uh, well, I might, but uh, yeah, this is. I've I've tried to get away from the heavier stuff that I do, but. Uh, How dare you? I want to so bad. But no, um, I don't feel like detuning my guitar or getting one with a seventh string. But um, yeah, this is, this, is, this is not like about a breakup. It's about like when you're dating someone and you're trying to figure out why the fuck it's not working. And so you start like assuming like, well, maybe it's where I live. Maybe it's whatever. That's what this is about in a sense. I don't know. I preambled it too much so you don't need to know the story. I did write this about you and Chris. I knew it. Anyways, this is called Right Set of <laughs> This is uh, from my band Let's Not, and this is called Right Set of Stairs. And then we'll play a song and I'll stop talking. All right, that's great.
first. Yeah. Uh, we're we're uh, we're almost done, but we appreciate everyone staying. Y'all were very very nice. Yes. I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are members of the defeated county. Yeah. Um, we are here in town, so look us up on Facebook and stuff. Right now, the only show we have booked is in Naperville, Illinois, which you guys would have had to have been like a really big fan of tonight to come to. Um, which, uh, you know, it's okay if you're a big fan, but not that big of a fan. We have super a lot of hotel rooms. <laughs> We will. Where do we play in St. Charles? Okay. We'll do it. <laughs> okay. We'll do it. <laughs> so, um, this is a, a official Defeated County song, as a couple of the ones I played tonight were. Um, and uh, it's kind of our only really, truly happy song. And it's a song about when you just kind of are like in love with someone for the moment. And you know you're just in love with them for the moment, but you're okay with it, you know? Like, you, you know it's not gonna be the love that's gonna last forever, that you're not that person's, like, one. But it's just so fucking fun, you go with it anyway. Um, and, uh, yeah. Um, all the colors might be referencing orgasming. I'm just throwing that out there. And, uh, it also might be referencing that. Yeah, might be. That's why I like it when Jason sings it so much. <laughs> well, that was weird. Spin me round, spin me round, spin me round, spin me round. Spin me round, spin me round, spin me round, spin me round. Spin me round, spin me round, spin me round, spin me round. Spin me round, spin me round, spin me round, spin me round. It's all the colors. Turn to one To love the colors 
turn to one So we got one more song as the as the non percussion members of the defeated county to play for you all. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Um, thanks to Shane and, and Dan for putting this together. Um, you got you got me here. I, I googled it and I ended up in Old Baxter at like somebody's house, and I was like, I don't think this is where we go, right? Is that your house? I think I was at your house. <laughs> Google's mean. Google's mean. Fucking Google. Right? You can you can Google search my name and find some mean things too. It's okay. You can find way worse than my incorrect address on Google about me. Um, so this is <laughs> This is the last song we're going to play. Um, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. I feel like that a lot of our, like, the themes of the music that I write are just kind of about desperately wanting to feel that there is something more than there is. Um, and uh, this song was very much a personal reflection of that, just feeling like uh, I kind of just fucked around so much that I lost my, um, lost my ability to, to really like have that shine that I feel like I used to when I was a kid. Um, and a lot of people seem to relate to that. Um, I also wrote it right around the time that David Bowie died. And so it's very strongly influenced by kind of um, David Bowie circa the man who owned the world era. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna play that song, I guess. It'd be weird if we didn't at this point. Yeah. <laughs> you should have known me years ago when I still had a glow. When I still had a glow Why couldn't you have met me Years ago When I still had a glow When I still had a glow Cause you would not believe how blue my eyes used to be they have gone and turned green the more the things I've seen When I still had a glow When I still had a glow Why couldn't you have met me Years ago When I still had a glow When I still had a glow God bless for my 
Thank you, Naked Vine. Hey, thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Uh, We'll be back here January 8th for uh, next month's edition with Cree Rider, Carol Louise, and Drew Schaefer. Uh, So come back out and join us for that one in every second Tuesday of the month. Um, You can find everything here at Naked Vine at nakedvine.net and get involved with the calendar. Uh, Please help me... uh, one more time, uh, Irene Allen, Devin Cahill, Langan Neubacher, and Jeremy Essig. Thank you. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.